Welcome to part two of the 2024 calendar book. I have so much stuff piled on top of my paper cutter. I decided I did not feel like spending an hour putting all that stuff away. So I measured out five by seven and started cutting with my knife here, hoping that this would be more expedient than trying to put all that stuff away, which should be done. I just don't want to do it right now. While the dogs are asleep, I don't want to rock the boat with noises because they'll come in here looking around and causing a ruckus. And I decide I'm just going to do this and get it done. Of course, like, you know, it takes uh, brute strength to do it 55 times because this is very thick board. I wonder if I'm making any progress. No. <laughs> Not really. Well, look, it's still, I didn't even go through the other side. Phooey. All right, so being the most impatient person that I can be. Taking the most expedient way possible. Ta -da! Oh, look, it cut through. <laughs> I don't care about this because this is all going to be, you know, this is going to be covered up. So let's flake that off. And I got a nice board for another book. All right, so now we got to do this part. Hi, yay, yay. All right, so I'm going to put it even here so that I can make sure my line is straight with the ruler. I need a different kind of ruler than this. I have a T-square, but it's plastic, and I end up cutting the plastic every time I cut something with it, and I'm thinking probably not the best decision to do it that way. So let me fast forward through this silliness and see you guys on the other side. Okay, so I slog my way through cutting this with my cutter and they're the same size. Yay! <laughs> and now I think what I'm going to do is figure out how to cover the board. Um, I'm not sure if I want to use PVA or art glitter glue, but I need to find something that's very strong. I could use Yes Paste, but mercy, that stuff is so messy. Uh, let's see. Uh, here's the material that I ironed in part one of the video. And I think I might be able to get both of these, yep, out of one piece. Oh, I'm gonna have tons of material left over. Look at that. Oh, ooh, I'm so hippie. All right, so I'm gonna turn it this way. As I think I would like the writing, because there's text here, I would like for it to go the same way as everything else. So I'm gonna guesstimate how much I'm gonna glue onto the book. Probably not more than that much for that one. And then, ooh, let's not do that. Um, then I'll have cut, okay, so that's it. <laughs> Let me start cutting my material. All right, so I need to give myself enough that I can fold the material up. I don't care if it's straight because I'll make trimmings. Look at all this material I have left over. Oh, I am so excited, and da da da, I have enough to make two very hard covered books. <gasps> woo woo woo. Okay, that makes me very happy. Plus, I have some of this stuff left over for more things. All right, so I'm gonna take this, and I would rather roll it up in a roll than fold it in quarters, but we'll do that later. Okay, so we have our things this direction and I have enough at the top and the bottom I don't want my text to be crooked although I suppose it really doesn't make any difference it's just for me but I would like for it to be more straight okay so we're gonna cut here Oh, 
Oh, doggone it. What a mess. Okay. All right, so we put that over there. Oh, my goodness, it's so pretty. And it will have to be this way. So because I'm not going to be able to see what I'm gluing when I glue it, I'm going to try to... Let me put this down a little further. I'm going to try to crease this to give me a guide so when I flip it on the other side, I know that it's going to fit inside the parameters of the fold. Mercy, I cro crooked. <laughs> Did it work? Mm, not really. <laughs> did did it did it work? I don't want to iron. I just got it cooled off. Shoot. Can't come it. Well, I guess I suppose this will have to go. Yeah. Okay. All right, glue. Actually, I need my corner cutters because I'm not very good at estimating All right, corners. Because this board is thicker than what I normally use, I'm going to have to find oh, I'm going to have to find one that, you know, these ha this and this have to be level with each other. So it is not 2.25. Let's go up to What does this one say? 3.0. Oh, that's darn close. Um, two point, is that 3.5? 2.50. This one is 2.25. This one is 6. That's way too fat. These two are way, well, what's this one? 5, and this is a 12. This is a 4.0. 275. 150. So it looks like this one's going to be my best bet, which is a three. Uh, before I do something silly, let me trim around the edges just a hair. And I think I might, because of the thicknesses of this board, I think using this as my guide is too small. So let's see what we got here. Let's use a regular ruler. There you go. Well, I'm not cutting much off from the way it looks. And that didn't go well. <laughs> Okie okay, no. Well, shoot. Okay, that's a bad idea. Um, wonder if I just kind of Run it. What am I doing? Mm. Run it down here to set where I should cut with scissors. Well, shoot, that's that didn't really do any good, did it? Well, fiddlesticks. All right, so let me cut where I can see it. I think my blade is so dull, that's why it's not wanting to go through the material. And then up here, I can see where it just did not go well. I'm trying to lessen the bulk for when I put something on top of it because now this material is double the thickness it was, although it is very small, but it is double the thickness. I don't think I want that on there. Yeah. Okay. So, let's try this again. Where's the writing? I guess I need to go this way. Well, it's a little crooked. Sorry the video cut off. My SIM card was full, so I had to copy and delete some videos off of there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the glue, and I'm going to glue it this way so I can see that the writing is not like, you know, this. I, I like the writing, and so I'm going to line my board up with the grid here, and then I'm going to do this. Yep. Okay, so I need to coat this in glue. Um, as much as I hate to use Yes Paste, I think I will. 
I don't like it because it's just messy. I have like, you know, a ton of it. Look at that. Is that's gross. All right, and so let me get something to spread it with. I kind of like using the palette knife. I watched other people use credit cards and stuff, and I do like it. I do like to use the credit cards, but with this stuff, I don't know. I just think that this would be easier for me than a credit card. I think that I can get it much more smooth on here without too much of a mess, although it is kind of icky, gross stuff. I won't tell you what I think it looks like. <laughs> there we go, right off the side. It's not good. All right, so I want to make sure that it, I get the four corners really good with good coverage with the glue because I don't want my corners to be funky. And the flatter you make it, more smooth like icing a cake, the better you'll be in the long run. All right, so let's get this out of the side. I know I do have some glue that's over the edges, but that'll be okay. Then I'm going to take this and pray it goes well. Because once you set this stuff down on this, yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to take this, I don't know what you call it. Uh, whatever this is, and I'm gonna make sure. Oh, there's something on it. I thought I cleaned this off last time I used it. Anyway, I'm gonna make sure that this is, the glue adheres very well to the back side of the iron-on stuff. I need to clean the bottom of that off. It's sticking. Okay. I got a little wonky. And now I cannot change it. It is on there for good. Although the text is straight. Huh. How did I manage that? Alrighty then. <laughs> Do not question. Just move forward. Okay. So I think I'm going to cut a little off the top here. I hate wasting this stuff. It just makes me crazy. Err. Um, okay. Do I want to cut any off of here? I know I have seepage out from running that over it. All right. Uh, let's see. So what size did I decide I had to use this for this? I set it aside so I could find it and don't, here it is, a three. All right, so because my blade is not working very well, I'm just gonna take a pencil and then take scissors and cut my corners. This helps to lessen the bulk when you pull it up and smooth it out. And then I'm gonna have to wipe that off because that's got yes paste on it. All right. So I'm just going to take scissors and cut right where the line was. Oh, sorry. I hope I'm not out of frame. I'm not even looking. There we go. This is so much easier than cutting just plain material because the iron-on stuff on the back gives it a little more girth. And I, I do I do like that. All right, so here we go with the yes paste. Ugh. I hope I don't regret this. <laughs> Eek. Ugh. All right. Ugh. All right, so when I use glue and it's paper, I usually try to run some glue on the edge, but I think I'm going to take the yes paste and kind of smear it here this way so that it wraps around the end of the book nicely. I say that with no expectations that it's going to go well. <laughs> I'm just going to do it. All right, here we go. 
Oh, <gasps> shock of all shocks. Look at that. Ooh, that looks lovely. It worked. And my material's pretty flat on the board. <gasps> oh, I'm so happy. Let's see if we can do that again. Little, yes, paste right here on the end. And some on the material that's had the glue um, ironed the... I don't know, heat and bond, pell on, whatever you want to call it. I put a little here. I don't want to get too crazy. Whoops. All right. Flat. Oh, I see I put too much on it because I can see it oozing out the end. All right, so this is what we're going to have to do is take this and make sure that this... is nice and tight around the end and then you know you just kind of wipe the glue down there yeah no and it's sticking to the board so obviously I had seepage and then we're gonna try to figure out how to make these corners lovely because I'm used to doing with this paper not materials so I'm not exactly sure what I should do hmm well I guess you just fold in the corners like you do when it's paper Huh? And then do the glue thing. It does leave the corners rather bulky. All right, what do I care? Don't get too crazy there. It's really important to me that this adheres very well because it's something I'm going to use every single day next year. little in the corner and try not to smear it, smear it everywhere in the corner. Now I know when you do with paper I just kind of tuck it in like that with my thumbnail and kind of indentate it. Get in. And now we're going to do it this way. Voila! Did work! I think this is going to have to take a few days to dry. I don't think this is going to be an over, this is going to be a, oh, I'm going to complete the project in one thing. So how does, how's it look? I, I love this material. I just love it. Okay, let's do the other side. Probably going to fast forward through the rest of this part. this word here and I want it far enough from the edge that when I drill holes in it I won't drill a hole through the word received and I like this part right here too all right Ooh. I'll flip it over to make sure my cutting is a little bit better than last time so I don't have to cut as much excess off and not use the dulled blade. Oh, look, new book. Alrighty, and then we're going to trim a little off the end here so I don't have as much bulk. And maybe even, oh, be careful, no, nope. okay, me even this out right here. The first side of the book is always the hardest for me because I'm not really sure what it is I'm doing, even though I've made a million books. You know, it's always kind of touch and go for me. Um, pencil. <laughs> if I was doing paper, I usually save them. And in case I couldn't get the two edges to come together, I would glue them on the corner here in case the, you know, there was something showing. 
to make sure that it was distractible by putting the stuff in the corner. All right, so on with the yes paste. When I get this done, I'll show you the two completed pieces, so I'll be back. Okay, so I'm on the fourth corner, and I'm flipping it over. I'm gonna pull the material down and make sure it sticks. I think I've got a corner here that's gotten a mind of its own. I might have to squirt some glue in there. This this yes paste is just ugh. it works really well, but kind of reminds me of a child with a runny nose. All right, so here's my received. My print is pretty straight, not perfect, but eh, I'm kind of happy with it. And then I gotta let it dry. Here's the other one. I think this one might be the front and this might be the back. So it'll go like this. Thank you, Cindy Utter, for the idea of using better quality board on it instead of a cereal box like I was thinking. And now to let them dry. This is where my patience is tried is that I am <laughs> not patient about things that need to dry. And I don't want to use a heat gun. I actually want this to take time to dry. So I'm going to go off and do something else with my time. Is it flat? Yep. I'm going to go off and do something else with my time, like maybe vacuum or sit in the recliner and knit. Probably option two. <laughs> See you when it gets dry. Good morning, everyone. This is the last part of part two. <laughs> All right, so this is the next day. It is 6.10 in the morning, and I did feel them yesterday, last night, and despite using um, Yes Paste, the boards were, were bowing a little bit, so I stacked them one on top of the other, and then I put this on top and weighted them down, I did not use the book press. It's out in the garage, in the garage shop, and it worked fine. Thankfully, it worked fine because it's thicker, better board. I think is the reason why it, it works so well. So they're they look pretty good. I'm I'm very pleased. All right. So today, or actually, yeah, today, which I will film, try to film part three. I will go out into the garage. And I will decide where, actually, I can do it now. Why wait? No, I can't. I have to do inside papers. All right, it was suggested to me by my art buds that I use heavy-duty watercolor paper or mixed-media paper to put on top of this. I'm not really sure I want to do that. Because, and it was suggested that I doodle on it or art on it. I really don't want to do that. <laughs> only, only because I'm lazy. Not because it's not a good idea. I'm just too lazy to do it. I was thinking I would just cover it in maybe black cardstock. And then, you know, the, the strips that I had left over, things like this. I thought maybe, although we'll see, that then I could sew around the edges here and fix and sew along top here and then glue pockets onto the front and the back of the book but why do that right because I oh, look see it needs to be ironed again it's coming off all right um I don't know will I use the pockets I'm not sure so that's something I need to think about between now and when I go on to part three something else that I decided I was going to do is a friend sent me a bag full of gorgeous corners, book corners. And the reason I like the book corners is because it. I had an incident with one of my books where this, the, the corners here, from pulling it on and off the shelf were getting scuffed up. It was paper. It was paper. But I thought that once I put the cover on this side that I would use these. See, I only have four, so you can't do them at the top, and there's really no point in doing them at the top anyway, because that's not what's getting scuffed up. You see those? Aren't those beautiful? Wait, let me change the light. Can you see that better? Is it focusing? 
Yeah. Aren't those pretty? So I thought that I would use these on the front and back corners so that when I shove it on the shelf, and I don't set it up there, whoops, wrong way. I don't set it up there nicely, I'm not going to lie. I ram it on there and then I jerk it up. You know, it's, I, I'm not careful. That's what I'm trying to say. That's, I'm not careful with it. So I just thought that if I put, oops, if I put these on the bottom, you have to mash them with pliers, and I'm not doing that yet because I have to cover this up. But I thought it would be much nicer. Ah, dadgummit. Well, anyway, you get the drift. I thought it would be much nicer if I had these on here to save the book from getting torn up. Like I said, it'll be used every single day for a year. Um, and I really... Let me see if I can show you the book I'm talking about. Oh no, I put the corners on this one. Okay, so let me tell you a tale. This one was getting torn up in its paper and the, the paper was coming off of the board. And I don't like the way that looks. See, and it start, it's, you know, it separates after a while. So what I decided to do is I had extra little corners in my drawer and I went ahead and put the corners on all four front and well nope not on the back anyway I put it on the bottoms which was the most important part but I like the way it looks you know symmetrical all right so I put them on there but it was after I had already drilled the holes and stitched the book so this interferes with this bottom thread so don't do that think about where you're going to put the holes first put this on the end when you are measuring to do the holes and measure from here this way instead of doing the holes and then going oh I need to pop those on oops they kind of rub on the see they kind of rub on the um on the string or the thread that I used to sew it together and I had to sew it a second time because it was starting to come apart so I learned a lesson from this book I still dearly love this book I mean this is the black and tan book that I just have done a ton of things in and I really love this book and I still use it it's when did I make it 42921 so I am still working in this book because I put way lots of pages in it let me see how much do I have left to do in it all right oh there's my oh my beautiful paper clip um I have a lot of pages well comparative. I, I feel like these are a lot of pages left in this book and I've already made a second book that I showed in a previous video um, and then I will take my my pen holder off and then this will go on the shelf never to be seen again <laughs> where all good books go to die on a shelf and then I will put this on the new book which I made the same size as this one so this will fit on the other book. I love this thing. I got it from Amazon. It's got elastic on it and you just slip it over your book. Now I did stretch it within an inch of its life to put it on here. And they may make smaller ones for like five by sevens. I'm not really sure, but it works really well and the elastic is held up great. And then I did have just one pin in it and then I had to do some small pen work and then I added the second pen. But this thing has worked beautifully since I bought it. And don't ask me how much it was. I know it's on Amazon. If I can remember to put the link down below, I will. If not, you're going to have to go hunting. All right, so there's that. So that's the lesson I learned about putting corners on. So when I go out in the garage to use the Dremel, I'm not going to show you, you me using the Dremel because I'm not going to drag all this stuff out there, the camera and all that mess. So what I'll do is I'll slip this on and slip the top. Nope, there won't be a top one. I'll slip this on and then I will measure. Maybe what I ought to do is slip the top one on so they look more even. So yeah, maybe I should just for grins and giggles. I'll figure out what half is between here and here and then divide that into thirds. Half and then do here and then here. That way it looks even when I take this off. It'll be the same distance from here to the middle and from whatever this was to the middle. It'll look more uniform. I don't know. 
Let me think about this a while. I need another cup of coffee. <laughs> okay, so that's it for the part two. Part three is I'm going to find something that I like to go on here. I will glue it on, let it dry for a couple of hours, pop these on before I go out in the garage so I make sure I get my measurements correct, and then I will dremel my holes. There will be three holes, and I will also put um, either a silver or a gold. I think this one's good. Uh, well, I guess I have to use silver because I want it to match these. So I'll put silver in here. I'm going to try hard not to drill in that word. I really like that, and I like this, like I said earlier. Anyway, if I have to drill into it, I have to drill into it. So I usually do anywhere from a quarter of an inch to half an inch in. So it might happen. Let's see, where's the ruler? I know it was here a minute ago. Well, it's walked off, as does everything while you're recording. I swear. <laughs> oh, it's only a six inch ruler. How does it manage? Oh, I see. I was measuring something else on the side. All right, so five by seven and half an inch in, it, I'll end up doing some of the word. Let's see, what do we got here? Let's put that there this here. Let's take a quick measure. So in between the corners is about five inches. Yeah, about five inches. So center will be two and a half and then I might go in half an inch from here and then half an inch from here to do the three holes. Yeah, that might be it. So when I go and drill the holes, I'll tell you how I do it. I mark in pencil where it's going to go. And then I clamp these two pieces together because I, <laughs> I had experience one time where I drilled the top one, then I drilled the bottom one, and they didn't line up. <laughs> so I'll clamp these two together, and then I will mark the holes on the top one, and I will drill the holes so that they actually match so when I go to sew everything will be lined up. All right so stay tuned for part three and I will see you guys then. Bye!